What's up guys, welcome back. Today, we have got a treat for you. So I've got Burton from PropStream in the house and what he is going to do is he is going to give out what, in my opinion, is probably the best tutorial for PropStream that you will see this year. Now in this demonstration, he's gonna be talking about how to find homes for sale. So whether you're a fixer flipper or whether you're a wholesaler just looking to make some quick cash off of a few deals to get your cash flow up, you do not wanna miss this tutorial. Now of course on this channel, we do focus more on manufactured housing. However, you will be able to use the same tips and tricks that he shows in this demonstration if you wanna go the more traditional real estate route. Now this is gonna be a little bit more lengthy than my other videos, but in the interest of time, I will be including time stamps down in the description of this tutorial so that you can skip around to look at the information that's most relevant to you. Also, if you'd like to follow along with the demonstration, I'm going to be including a link down in the description as well so that you can sign up for PropStream and get seven days free trial. Yes, in the interest of transparency, I will get a slight kickback from you signing up for the service. But like I said, it's a seven day free trial to gain access to a very powerful real estate data system that you can use today. So what have you got to lose, right? Now, if you're anything like me, you know that Life in America is basically a subscription service. So it's my job to get you from the basic package to the pro package because life's too short for that basic shit. Life's too short to be a basic dude. Now, if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. It's always good to see you guys down in the comments. However, if you're a new viewer, do me a favor, smash that like button, hit subscribe. It takes 1.5 seconds and it really helps me out with the algorithm. So that's enough for me. Let's go on ahead and dive into it. So Guys, we're going to be talking about mobile homes today. And everybody in the group will know exactly why I'm wearing this wig right now. Do you want to make a gajillion dollars with mobile homes? Would you like to use PropStream? That's right, everybody, because we're blessed, aren't we? <laughs> a bit, uh, a bit little, a bit different right there. So anyways, they're over there <laughs> laughing. They're over there laughing. Yvonne said, angry, slight understatement. Okay, anyways, bro, uh, tell them a little <laughs> bit about your, your background and stuff, and then we can just kind of go off into it, because I know that there are some people in the group, um, I asked them yesterday to uh, kind of put down like some locations and stuff for you to look in for them, you know, because okay. I want to see if this will work for them. This is more about my students than it is about me. I can get right. data and stuff anytime, so... A little bit about your background first, a little bit about PropStream, and then we'll go off into how to operate the uh, the software. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, a little bit about me. I'm just like you. I'm a nobody, right? Like, not that you're nobody, but you know what I mean? I'm not famous. Uh, there's nothing special about me. I didn't. I don't have any amazing abilities, at least as far as I know right now. And I'm 35. I still haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> but I, I heard about PropStream uh, nearly 10 years ago. Yeah. Uh, I kid you not. I heard about them in, an, in a Craigslist ad. Uh, I had recently lost my job and I was looking for a job and somebody said, hey, check out Craigslist. I looked at it. There's an ad for a tech support agent. I answer the call. Small company, small team. We have this real estate software and it looked just like this. I always keep this as a reminder of where we come from, right? So PropStream has been around since 2006. I joined the team in 2013. Dope. And when I joined the team, go ahead. I'm sorry, Mike. No, I said, that's dope. I like it. <laughs> uh, when I joined the team, um, one thing I noticed is that there wasn't really a, too many training uh, material, right? It was kind of like, hey, here's our product. We expect you to know what you're doing and, and just kind of run with it. And so that wasn't really working out too often, right? In, in anybody's favor. It wasn't working in our favor. It wasn't working in our user's favor. So I decided, you know what? I need to know what our users are doing with our data. I need to know what we're doing and how we're getting this data. So I decided to just start asking a lot of questions. So I asked the company leaders a lot of questions. I asked you investors a lot of questions and I was able to kind of put it together. And as you may see now, we have video tutorials, we have webinars that we do weekly. You have me now. Our goal is to teach you this stuff so that you don't have to spend a day, two, three days trying to figure out how to use technology, you can spend those you know, days, one, two, three days, focusing on dealing with the homeowners that really need your help, right? So yeah, think of me today as your tour guide, but I've yes. been around PropStream for nearly a decade, uh, but that's besides the point today, I'm just gonna show you guys how to use our system effectively. 
Okay, man, that is wonderful, man. We are glad, we are blessed to have you here, man. Seriously. Um, Thank you so to much. Be, <laughs> and to be honest with you, uh, just to kind of like take a, a quick side note there is that I can totally feel you on uh, asking questions to people because to be honest with you, I've been doing, I've been flipping mobile homes for about, for going on five years now. Uh, this year right here makes five. And I know what I know, but at the same time, I didn't know what to teach. And to be honest with you, like asking more questions and stuff to the people in the group, I've actually gotten better at teaching people. So I totally feel you on that right there. So what yeah, I'm do, I love that. Yeah, man, it's, it's great. So what I'm going to do right now is I am going to uh, make you the host. Are you ready to share your screen? I am absolutely ready to share my screen. All right, I'm going to make you the host for this meeting. And then we're just going to, uh, we're going to go for it, man. <laughs> Here we go. All right. So I, I'd like to first start off by just showing you guys some additional resources before you even sign up with PropStream. Um, if you go to our main website, PropStream.com, we have a pricing tab if you want to know everything about our pricing. But make sure you click on Gene's because you guys, I might sleep because you guys actually get um, a discounted price. So we're going to tell you what the base price is, but I think most importantly, what the marketing pricing is going to be. So if you're going to skip trace a list to get phone numbers and emails, or if you want to send out an email through PropStream or send out postcards to the leads that you're building, this is where you can find our pricing. Okay. And we even have a mobile app uh, that comes at no additional cost with yeah. your application. Um, the resource page, that's the next thing I would recommend. Uh, one, one of the most important things here is the video library. So if you don't want to sit through this, or let's say you just have to go, this will show you a lot of great videos on how to do a quick search, how to set up your campaign, how to set up a website and so forth. And finally, but certainly not least, the PropStream Academy. This is everything you need to know about PropStream. It's a free academy. Just sign up using an email. Once you've signed up to the academy, we have several courses. We have live webinars, webinar replays, finding motivated sellers, changes with our data, everything you can imagine related to PropStream. There's quizzes. Heck, you'll even get a certificate at the very end of it as well. So wanted to start there, but when you log into PropStream, yeah. this is what you're gonna see. Our map, which first we're gonna start in your area, but again, we're nationwide. Now, before we dive into our system, the first thing I wanna show you is our toolbar here on the left hand side. Okay. Now, the reason why I want to start here is because here's what we do for you, right? We have a lot of data, but here's what we do for you. We address two things that we believe you're going to need to address. And, and Mike, please correct me if I'm wrong, but we believe those two things are generating leads. Mm -hmm. And then after generating those leads, analyzing the leads, because if you know, you are generating leads and marketing to them, what's the next thing you think it's going to happen? They're going to uh, call you back and now you got to yeah. analyze that property. Yeah. So either or, whether you're searching an individual property to analyze it or searching a market to build a lead, that's why we're sending you to the search page right off the bat. Because when you log in, you're either doing one or the other in our opinion, right? Yeah. Now, you're either going to save that property or the list of 50 or 100 properties you just built from our database. If you do, my properties is where we send them. So here in my properties, your favorites, these are individual properties that you save, will right. be stored here. And any marketing list, so if you search a city and bend our, filter, our, our filters a little bit, essentially manipulate our data and save that list, it's going to be stored here. So let's do this. Let's bring a property or let's build a marketing list. And Michael, you mentioned about asking your, your students about or your viewers about some cities that they're in or zip codes. Yeah. You'd like yeah. to present those now. Let, let's go for it. I actually got um, a lot of responses uh, from people in the group. So let's go on ahead and start off uh, with, let's just say, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. I got a lot of people in this group in the uh, North Carolina area. So okay. we'll start there. Um, and I will say this right here, and this is not to badmouth anybody or anybody else's service, but we did try to run a few things in uh, North Carolina with batch leads. 
didn't really turn up a whole lot of stuff, but we might want to go on ahead and check the entire state. And then if we if, if it's overwhelming there, then we can kind of break it down by counties. Yeah, you know, actually our system and most systems aren't eligible to do the state. It just the servers aren't able to do it yet. Okay. So what I would recommend, first thing is either search by popular areas or see, I'm not from North Carolina, right? So I don't know all the counties. That makes so one of us. Exactly. So <laughs> I'm actually here's, from North Carolina. <laughs> yeah. here's, here's what I would do. Go to Google and just do North Carolina. Mm -hmm. They've got counties down here. Uh, and there you go. Just uh, North Carolina counties. And then they'll okay. tell you which counties are in there. So now I have them all. Okay. And once you know, I find, let's say, Mapplenburg's the one I want, I yeah. just go into PropStream and I search that. Okay. I think I'm spelling it wrong. Am I? M O L. Right. No, I'm sorry. Weird names. Uh, yeah. Howard yeah. Howard Williams said, Pasquatank County, and it, it's like a weird spelling to it. There it is. Yeah. Uh, so found the county. We have three hundred thousand records that have pulled up in this county. Right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to categorize them for you. So if you want to go through three hundred thousand records. Don't let it stop you. There's 50 per page. And as you can see, we're on page one of 7,800 pages. Ain't nobody Again, got time for that. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time nobody's going to be able to do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So what we will do is we will break them up for you. So we'll show you how many of them are on the MLS, pre-foreclosure auctions, and so forth. But let's just be openly honest. Get familiar with our filtering system. Yes. Right? So after you pull up your market, county, city, or a zip code, go straight into our filter. Now, before we do that, there is one thing I want to show you not too many people actually know about, and it's that you could actually change the way you view our records on the right side. See, a lot of people don't know that there's three ways you can view these records. You really? can view them by pick view. Yeah. You can view them by list view. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is what I call spreadsheet view, and it's this right here. And so by opening that up, you're going to be able to see, again, like a spreadsheet view. And the reason why I want to show you these three different searches is you can do something clever like this. I'd like to see all the liens in this market, but I like to break them up by zip code. So now I know which zip code has the most liens. Maybe that's an area we should focus heavily on our marketing. Right, right. We okay. can also do that with cash buyers. Right. Hey, there's... 57,000 cash transactions. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, which zip code in this county had the most cash transactions? And once you find that zip code with the most cash transactions, you just perform that zip code search and then start building your leads there. If that yeah, makes sense. Okay. So now, but, I, I live in Alabama now. And like, I would say like your most, your wealthiest counties would be like, uh, you know, Shelby County, and uh, Escambia County. So this is kind of like how we track down the money, right? Exactly. I love that you say that. You know, yeah. I've always heard people say, follow the money. And here is a perfect example. Out of all the cash transactions, and if I break them up by zip code, you know, there's only one cash transaction in our system in 27699. So again, not to, not to say you can't get a contract in that zip code, but not too many cash buyers that you're going to be able to promote that property in. Versus if we go a little bit down, you see that 28031 has several cash transactions. As a matter of fact, it continues over to the next page and so forth. Actually, it goes to the next few pages. Yeah. So the idea is here's one zip code with one cash transaction, and here's another zip code with over 50 cash transactions. Right. Follow the money. So I would lean over here, right? Mm -hmm. Just saying that. So. That's why I love using the spreadsheet view because you can do things like that. And not, not too many people know, because I, I hear people ask me, how do you find a hot market? Follow the money, yeah. right? Cash buyers, break them up by zip code or the city, and then start building your leads in that area. Because once yeah. you have a lead in that area, you have all these cash buyers you just found yeah. that are going to come right after you. So. That's it. That's kind of the, <laughs> that's, that's kind of the, the, the a wholesaling in a nutshell right there. You know, you go ahead exactly. and put together your exit strategy, you find your property, you work your way in, bada bing, bada boom. Everybody goes to Red Lobster or Olive Garden at the end of the night. 
<laughs> exactly. So I wanted to show you that because a lot of people don't know that we even have that ability. And again, for someone like me, not familiar with Mecklenburg, uh, if you were to tell me, Burton, we need you to find leads in this county, well, first thing I do is follow the money. And once I have all that, right, all the zip codes that are hot, could be three, then I would go in here and search just that zip code and then start finding my motivated sellers in that market, if that right. makes sense. So that's just one way of how you can manipulate our data before even going into the filter. But this filter I just clicked on, which is right over here, mm -hmm. is going to be your best friend. So let me just break down what we're staring at first. Here on the left side are the additional criteria. Now, what you can do if you'd like is you can start here and build your own list. So I like right. to break it up into like three segments, right? So you have the filters, which you can build your own list. Right. You have the middle segment, which is the 18 different options that you can choose from within PropStream. And then here on the right side is your search summary, right? So if I click, let's say vacant here, you're gonna see in the search summary vacant. And if I add owner occupied, yes, it's just gonna keep painting that picture here on the right side. So mm -hmm. that's how I've broken down this filter and I hope you can look at it the same way. Yeah. But there are over 120 filters. As you click on property characteristics, you're gonna see quite a bit. MLS status, you're gonna see quite a bit. Right. So here's what I want you guys to focus on. Within PropStream, there are two types of searches that you can perform. And one of them, I believe everybody's doing right now. And this search I call the traditional search. It right. goes like this. You're going to go into your market, in this case, Mecklenburg County, and we're going to pick a list. And this list could be a pre-foreclosure list. This list could be a lean list. It could be a vacant list. There's no right or wrong list. Now, granted, some lists you might need to react faster. Mm -hmm. Some lists might be more competitive. Yeah. Some lists might take longer, maybe a year to close the deal, right? There's no right or wrong list. You just have to be patient and consistent. Okay. Now, after you pick that list, what do we need to do most likely? We need to make sure it's off market. Otherwise, we're going to have to get it through an agent. Exactly. Like most of us don't want to do that. Right. Now, three, I would say about 80% of the real estate strategies out there, wholesaling, fixing, and flipping, um, require equity. Mm -hmm. So I've realized what investors would do after picking a list, making sure it's off market, they'll apply that equity amount. And last, certainly not least, are the property owner characteristics. So for everyone here, we would be choosing mobile homes, but some of their user might be choosing single family or a commercial building. Right. And some of us might want individual owned properties, some want corporate or property owned by trust. Right. This is the traditional method. And why? Because if we weren't here today, let's say there was no technology at all, Mm -hmm. This is how you're building your list. You'd go to the county and grab a list. Yep. You'd talk to a realtor and make sure it's off market. Mm -hmm. Then you'd uh, make, call the owner, and, I mean, or knock on their door in this case, and see if they had equity. And if they do, then you can proceed with it. Uh, but then you'd also have to make sure you're not calling a skyscraper versus calling a mobile home, right? Yeah. And that's where your property and owner characteristics come in. So this setup is what investors have been doing for decades, if not centuries. Yeah. So. Let's do that in prop stream. Okay. So we're in this county. We have over 300,000 records. I'm in the filters. The first thing I want to do is choose a list. And again, it could be the pre foreclosure list. It could be the tax delinquent list. It could be a bunch of senior owners or tired landlords. These are properties where they've been owned for 15 years and they're non owner occupied. But ah, okay. So these people is, right here might just be like, come take it off my hands. Absolutely. I mean, 15 years is a long time, especially if you're dealing with tenants and the property falling apart. And if you had a few bad tenants along the way. That's right. That's, yeah, how, right. that's how I got my first mobile home. Uh, I actually came across a guy. He used to have some mobile homes on his land. He got sick and tired of dealing with tenants. He and his wife just wanted to live out their golden years in peace. And uh, I caught the last mobile home that he had. And so those people do exist. Exactly. I love that you said that. You know, if someone who just bought a property is going to be a landlord last year. Mm -hmm. They're still happy. They're probably bragging about their cash flow. Yeah. 15 years go by. Oh, that's a different story. Yeah. <laughs> you get jaded. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the first thing we need to do in this case is we're going to choose a list. We're, we're choosing tired landlord here. But again, 
feel free to choose any list that you resonate with. Um, but after that, we got to make sure it's off market. Yeah. Now, you can find that here on the left hand side where it yeah. says MLS status. Yeah. You're going to want to click on that and get our additional filters for that category. Okay. And where it says on market, go ahead and hit no. Right. So think of that as a question Do you want it on market? No. Yeah. Don't want it on market. Because everybody for those and their granddad's going to be coming after it then. You nailed it. And yeah. if you guys do, I mean, I'm not saying that you can, but if, if there is someone out there that's like, I, I, I do want an on-market property, uh, go ahead and hit yes, and we'll just show you the ones that are listed yeah. within any. Or again, both. Yeah. Maybe you're the type that, hey, I don't care. I'll deal with it. I'll not deal with it. Any would be your option. But I know for most of us here, I would say nine out of 10 of that. I might be just making a broad assumption here, but I'm sure most of us want off-market property. So on-market, no. Next is the equity. Yeah. And now that we have tired landlords, it's off market. Let's put our equity amount. So for this one, Michael, what level of equity would you like me to put? Um, just put in whatever you'd like. I'm I'm actually uh okay. I'm actually enjoying this tutorial, man. What would you normally <laughs> right. what would you normally go with? Because I know we haven't even put in like our home type yet. So I'm actually anxious to see uh what actually comes up when you start oh, brilliant, going to brilliant. like the property characteristics and everything. Well, I, I will say this. A lot you know, of people say 35 a, or something, but you know, whatever. And, and I, I agree with that. On, on, an, on a national average, I would say if you take the investors on the East Coast, investors on the West Coast and North and South, and just look at the average equity, yeah. I would say, yeah, definitely. We're looking at like 30, 35. But their disclaimer here, right? That may not apply everywhere. Like right. I'm in Southern California where a three bedroom, two bathroom house is about $900,000. Yeah. And so 30% equity means that person's mortgage balance is probably around $600,000. But think about it, right? If I go to this homeowner whose house is worth 900,000 right. and it's decent, it's not falling apart. And I say, Hey, I'd like to give you $700,000 because that's, you know, that 65, 70% offer. Yeah. They're going to say no. Right. Yeah. So most most investors that I've seen in in high valued areas, mm -hmm. they start maybe at 10 percent equity. OK, because even at 10 percent, there's still a lot of profit that could be made, especially like here in my market. Right. Yeah. 10 percent of nine hundred thousand dollars is still ninety thousand in equity and that yeah. we could still make quite a bit. But national average, just like you said, if we look at it across the board. I agree yeah. with you about oh, and just, just for the record, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, is watching this live. Uh, he's in California, so yeah. stuff is dumb <laughs> expensive out there. Oh, uh, my goodness. I'll show you guys in a second how dumb expensive it is. Yeah. I've heard from mobile homes going for like 300 grand out there. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Some maybe even more than that. But yeah, it's ridiculous out here. But that's the third rule. That is the equity. And again, equity is going to be important because for most of us wholesaling or fixing and flipping, we're gonna need that to make that profit. Yeah. Finally, the property and owner characteristics. Now, property has a lot of data. Mm -hmm. So this is where you have to let us know what you like out of our data. So we have single family, we have residential vacant land, the list goes on. So what you need to do is go to our property characteristics and choose a classification. So for those that want a commercial building, choose commercial. And we'll show you that retail store. We'll show you that vehicle rental location, the daycare, preschool, the neighboring shopping center, right? That fits your category. Or maybe it's an office space. But yeah. because most of us are doing mobile homes, we're going to do residential for yeah. this example. But then we're going to go to the property type. Yep. What we need to do here is choose the subcategory. So under residential, now we're not going to choose single family. What we're going to do is scroll down and we're gonna choose mobile home. Yes, sir. We're gonna have that, and we're gonna choose also mobile home or trailer park. Mm -hmm. And you see how it increases. So if I just choose mobile home, it's just 238. But yeah. I need to also choose mobile home or trailer park as right. well. Mm -hmm. And then manufactured as well. I gotta right. choose everything that applies. Yeah. And then once I have that, your results will be here on the right side. Right. Now, and, and just to, just to kind of interject here is that when you when you brought up your results, because I know that you, you know, you, you typically don't deal with mobile homes, but I do. And it's great that you went on ahead and check mark that out. But it has modular down there. So I'll just briefly explain what a modular home is. A lot of houses that you look at, 
um, they can be mobile homes and they are mobile homes, right? But modular houses are actually uh, put together kind of like Legos. Like they'll have like the living room separate, the kitchen, the bedrooms and everything. And then what they'll, what they'll do is they'll transfer all of that stuff to a single site and put it together. I've got a really good friend of mine. I don't know if you've ever heard of her. Her name is uh, Christina Smallhorn. She is also on YouTube. Uh, she's called the, uh, the Your Real Estate Whisperer. And she is all about that manufactured home life and goes into it. But yeah, it's cool that you would bring stuff like that up and your system includes it. Yep, and then actually here's one perfect example of what that would look like. So I think we might, oh, we don't have the images yet. Actually, we might have maybe the view, but I love that you brought that up of the modular home example. Yeah. And so let's see if maybe we can see this property right there. So there it is. Okay, see that? that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> that is definitely a modular home. Yeah, so anyhow, the point here, guys, is that when you're building this list, your characteristics, you have to let us know. Because if you don't choose it, and if I don't choose any of those three options, uh, well, then we're casting a huge net. We're going through everything, single family, townhouses, condominiums. So make sure you choose mobile home, mobile home or trailer park, manufacture module if you want to include, if not, don't include it, okay? Yeah, that's a lot of properties right there in Mecklenburg County in North Carolina. Absolutely. So for those of you guys that are on the chat right now, hey, he's he's... He blessing you down right now. You know what I'm saying? Correct. Now, this is where I'm going to be openly honest with you guys, okay? Been doing this for nearly 10 years. And what we've discovered is that counties are not the same. One county will do things differently. Another county will do things completely differently, right? Absolutely. And what I'm, the reason why I'm bringing that up is that some counties will actually label it mobile home or they'll label it manufactured home or mobile home trailer park some they might not even label it at all it might actually just fall under uh just everything like it it's so weird and and I actually will give you an example here so let me just save this as an example so let's save this property what i'm doing right now guys is once you have your results so this is the end of our traditional search yeah. you just recap what we did tired landlord off market equity Property characteristics. Oh, we forgot to put the owner stuff. So let's go back there. Okay. So property characteristics are done. Yep. Owner characteristics are right here. Yeah. So here we could say, you know, own for 10 years, 15 years. We already have that for tired landlords. We already have 15 years. So you right. don't have to touch this. But in case this was, let's say, a high equity list, then I could say must be seven years or more, right? Right. And so we would have more results in that case. Okay. And then owner type. I'd like it to be an individual. So once you have the four traditional rules applied, right. you can now hit close at the very bottom. Your results on the right side. Remember, what started with 300,000 yeah. is now 1,100 that we can work with. We're going to check off our results, or if it's too much, hit filter here on the right side. You can filter your results. You can say, look, I'm not there yet. I only need... 250 from numbers one through 250. That's all I want to work with. Check those off. And now you can hit add to list. So we'll call this the Mecklenburg. I love it. Love it. Love it. And save. Now here's where I'm again, I'm going to be very openly honest. This is where it gets tricky because counties aren't the same. And mm -hmm. sometimes they don't do us the favor of labeling things. So I'm going to use my neighborhood as an example. Right. Um, in my neighborhood in California, there's this trailer park, uh, mobile home park, but it, it's not labeled mobile home. And it's just weird that they would do this. So I'm trying to find it right here. Where is this street? There it is. Los Alisos. And it's right around here there it is so, okay what does that say i mean we're, we're seeing it on the street on the screen it says el toro mobile estates mm -hmm. right so google knows of it as a mobile area i know of it of a mobile everybody that lives in this neighborhood knows of it as a mobile home but the county they didn't do us a favor what they did is they parceled it so as you see when i zoom in you see the parcels now right yeah. so rather than labeling each individual mobile home they label the entire lot instead. And that's where it can get really hard is because if I'm trying to look for a mobile home in, in Lake Forest, the city I'm clicking on, 
I can't find individual mobile homes so easily in this market because the county, instead of labeling each individual property, they labeled the entire area. And they not only labeled the entire area, but they called it, okay, they did this in favor, they called it mobile home, but there's no individual characteristics. Right. So every one of these parcels is technically a mo- part of the mobile home list, but it's, it's categorized as a complete thing. And that's where it gets tricky because if I wanted to market to this individual right here that I'm circling, I can't because the county hasn't done that for us. They haven't essentially itemized each individual uh, mobile home. All they're doing is saying, well, technically one person owns this whole thing. So that's how we're going to record it. We're going to record it as this one whole thing. Right. And they're not wrong for doing that. When in reality, we wish they would have told us that John lives here, Sue lives here, Brad lives here and their individual information. But some of the counties don't do that. So I wanted to explain that because if you, let's say, go to your market and you're typing in mobile home and it doesn't populate, yeah, you might need to zoom in and then click on it and see how they're labeling it. Like, let me give you another example in my neighborhood that I found really weird. Um, where are you? Public storage. Uh, there it is. So public storage, y'all know what that is, right? Public storage. Yeah. However, when we click on this and go into the details, it's labeled light industrial. Mm-hmm. It's not labeled public storage. And it's unfortunate because we have a filter that allows you to look for public storage, right? Mini warehouse, public storage. But this would never show up because it's not labeled as mini warehouse storage. It's labeled as light industrial. So it actually would fall under industrial, under light industrial with everything else that may be potentially labeled light industrial. And so this is where data gets tricky, right? So these are all the potential things that show up. So I wanted to show you guys that because I have someone that's like, Hey, I want to search gas station. How do I do that? I usually say first thing you probably want to do is zoom in on an area and then click on that gas station or that cafe. Mm -hmm. And once you click on it, see how it's labeled. And then once you know how it's labeled, then filter for that label. Kind of do a reverse engineer. Because if you assume, oh, this county is going to label it mobile home, your assumption is going to bite you in the butt. You're going to be missing out on a lot of leads because they're labeled something entirely different. So I do want to throw a rant on that because uh, you might need to do some clicking to see how things are labeled in your market. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Last thing I want to show you guys. Yeah. Is this thing called the four golden rules and please write this down. Okay? Okay. So the four golden rules is going to help you identify a homeowner's situation rather than look for just a list, because I'm going to be honest with you, 10 out of 10 of us are doing this already. We're grabbing a list, we're refining that list, and then we're going after that list. Yeah. What you can do with our data is create situations. So let me give you an example here. Rather than going into Mecklenburg County and starting with the list, mm-hmm. I'm going to do everything else first. I'm going to make sure all my leads are off market. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure it has that 35% in equity. And I'm going to make sure I look for all the mobile homes and the owners that I want first. So before picking a list, off market, 35% in equity. Yeah, we're whittling down. And then my property characteristics. Uh, I would do residential and I would do mobile homes, mobile park, manufactured. After that... See, I could choose a list, but everybody else is doing that, right? Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a situation instead. And so rather than picking a list, how about we just use characteristics? Like maybe the situation is the property is 60 years old. It's built in 1960 or before. Mm -hmm. So let's go after these three, uh, 13 properties. Or another situation could be maybe this is an individual owner who lives in a different state. Let's call the out-of-state trailer uh, mobile home owners okay. first, right? Or maybe instead of a, an out-of-state owner, maybe an individual who has two mortgage payments on a mobile home. Okay. Right? So yeah. the idea is that there are people out there, day in and day night, 
that are not in any of these lists and you're missing out on it. Like for example, these individuals with 20, uh, two mortgages, there's 20 of them, right? Right. If I were to have started with the liens lists, look what happens to that. There's none, you would yeah. have gotten zero results. Right. When in fact, there's 20 people out there that are making two mortgage payments and one or two of them could be on the brink of missing a payment, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the thing I, I'm trying to bring up is you got to start thinking about situations other than just a list because everybody's doing a list and I'm not saying you should stop doing that. You should start sitting back and thinking of things that could cause someone to want to sell. And we talked about one earlier. I thought that was clever is, you know, maybe an individual with multiple properties, maybe they have 10 properties or more. Here are 148 homeowners that have 10 properties or more. And these are the mobile homes that are listed yeah. under their portfolio. Mm -hmm. And when we call, they might be more, they might be a lot, it might be a lot easier to relinquish one property versus someone who only has two properties to let go. Yeah. Right. Someone with 10 properties might say, yeah, that one's probably the one that's been giving me the most headache. What's your offer? Right. So these are the four golden rules. Rather than starting with the list, which you should start no matter what. I mean, everybody should do this first. But once you're done building a, a lead from a list, start thinking of situations, multiple mortgages. Uh, maybe it's an old building in an HOA environment, a uh, senior owner in a two-story building, um, an out-of-state owner, maybe mm -hmm. someone who bought a mobile home a year before the pandemic. I mean, that's a great one, right? An individual person who bought a mobile home in 2019. Yeah, a year I didn't before, think about that. Yeah, a year before the pandemic. I mean, maybe, I mean, I'm, I'm crossing my fingers that they're good. They don't need your help. Yeah. But the reality is, one of these 78 homeowners here on the right side that bought a property in the in 2019 may have lost their job yeah right? or or it could be a rental property of theirs right, right. maybe it's a non-owner occupied there's 33 of them right yeah they could be rental properties and the tenant may not have been paying the rent for the last year or two yeah so these are situations and notice i never chose a list so Guys, that right there, I want to expose you to because technology is here and it's going to be here to stay. Yeah. So don't continue doing things the, the traditional way. I mean, you should, but you should start adapting to looking at filters in a way. And I like doing this. Look at the filters in a way of how can I manipulate the filters to create a problem that I can go solve? Yes. And most of your problems are going to need these three things first, mm -hmm. off-market, equity, the property and owner characteristics you need, and then create that situation. Okay. And that situation can change as the time change. Again, that 2019 list, this yeah. one right here, probably would not make any sense if there was no pandemic. But because there was, we can potentially call this list the I regret buying a home a year before the pandemic. Or could possibly right? be dead list. You know, I mean, I was a bad that joke. A I'm just saying, but it happened. All right. No, that is a reality. You know, as a matter of fact, uh, Michael, I, I had a buddy that the first thing that he did when the pandemic was here to stay was look for senior owners out of state because you're not traveling. You're yeah. not going to go visit that property. You're in a high risk category. Let's go after senior owners in out of state and found a lot of success with that one because again, they were in the same mindset. Yeah, I don't know when I'm going to go visit that property. Yeah. And at that point, it's taking from you. You might even have squatters now. So I love where your mind is going with that. So yeah, that yeah. right there are the traditional searches and four golden rules that you can apply. Does anybody have any questions regarding this, what we just covered? Because that's really, to me, the most important thing I wanted to get across is how to manipulate our data. Yeah, uh, guys, I want to tell you something right now. Uh, I'm going to bring up our kind of side by side. I'm going to go back to uh, where you're sharing here in a second. So uh, guys, this is, uh, he's, do you got any questions or anything like that? Go on ahead and put them in the chat down there. Uh, I will read them to him. And I also have like one thing that I want to say is um, this has been a problem that's been coming up for some of my students. It's not for me. I mean, I've been doing this for a while. 
But the thing is, is uh, no, I got my laptop and everything right here so I can see the comments because for some reason my phone just does not want to act right. So what I'll say is this right here. Some of them have been coming across mobile homes that are no longer classified as mobile homes, right? So a lot of people don't know this, but home uh, property owners can get a property and what will happen is, is that they might get the home detitled or homesteaded or whatever your state calls it, right? So a couple of reasons that they might do something like that is because of number one, you actually save a bit of money uh, when it comes down to not having to buy your decal each year, which is not much, but you no, know, hell, even hundred dollars is a lot of money when you ain't got it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, number two is they might do that because it will up the property value once you get the mobile home annexed to the land. So then at that point, the home is no longer classified as a mobile home. This might also affect, um, off market listings, right? Because technically speaking, it's still a mobile home. It can still move. It still has wheels and axles up under it. However, from a listing standpoint, it's it may not be classified as an actual mobile home. So this is what when it comes down to uh, driving for dollars. And I know that your um, your system allows people to do that. Like, folks, you got to get out here. This is a great system. It can help you go on ahead and make some money. But at the same time, you're going to come across some mobile homes that are no longer classified as mobile homes from a from the aspect of like how the state views it or how somebody or how your county has put it into their system. Does that make sense? You nailed it right on the head. And then, then, like you said, driving for dollars, helping you identify things that are not labeled the way you wanted to be labeled. And if you found one of those scenarios that Mike just brought up, click on it, search up, search it in prop and see how it's labeled. And then from there, you can start performing your searches using that label in that market, right? Oh, yeah. So gotta be that detective a little bit, right? So yeah. thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. And, and I'm going to tell you something, guys, like I know that and we've talked about this in the group before, you know, prop stream uh, for you guys will be ninety seven dollars a month. However, think about it this way. I put a lot of miles on my truck. OK, I just be out here making bank and stuff on these back roads and everything. But think about how much something a tool like this could save you in gas. Right. I drive a truck. It's not. You know, it's not a, uh, you know, a Honda Civic or anything where you can go like to the moon on a tank of gas and back. <laughs> but at the same time, just being able to, to get a bird's eye view on something, getting the data on something first before you head on out there or just make a phone call or whatever. You know, it can save you a whole lot of time and save you some money. So don't look at like 97 bucks a month as an expense, which it is, but it's a lesser expense than what you would do. In, as far as like time and money each month when you're trying to put together your deals. I just wanted to go on ahead and say that. So uh, we got a couple of questions down here in the chat. Uh, Keisha, Keisha says, I think I heard you say that we can search a single address. Absolutely. I'm just going to get to that in about a few moments. I was going to show you guys the other important part is what happens when they do call you back. How can we talk with confidence using PropStream's data? So that's a really good question. I don't know if you want to go right into that, Mike. Hey, uh, the woman asked a question, so let's see what we can. Love have it. <laughs> Love it. Okay. We got you. Let's here. go ahead and get started on that. So, right. the second part about our search page. So, this whole time we've been talking about you know, how to search a county and build a list the traditional way, right? Pick a list and refine it or the four golden rules. Just make sure it's off market equity, it's a mobile home and create a situation. But what we did talk about is what happens when you do like build this list, maybe you skip trace it in PropStream to get a phone number, maybe you call someone right after, or, or maybe you use our campaign to send a postcard out to them. Like what happens yeah. when they call you back? Well, here's what happens when they call you back. You're gonna wanna search that address. So let's say number three calls us, 8,600 new grass. We're gonna type that in. 86 new grass. So I, let's kind of role play here, right? So you're sitting in the office, your phone rings, you have no idea who it is. You pick it up. It's this homeowner it says, Hey, I got your postcard. Yeah. So you're interested in buying my mobile home I, that I am. What's your address, right? You're going to type in their address and you're going to click on that address. Now, instead of giving you all of the city's results. So let's do a before and after. Remember we searched the County earlier and we got everything the County had to offer here on the right side. It was like, hey, Burton, 300,000 records. 
But because you're searching a specific property, it's a whole different format now. So when right. you search an address, we give you a brief description of this address on the right side. Yeah. We give you the neighboring records right below. So you can see all the neighbors and their characteristics. We'll show you the MLS listings around that property, the pre foreclosures around that property, and the foreclosures around that property. Yeah. Just to kind of give you local knowledge. We'll even take the zip code of this property and give you the local zip codes information. To me, the most important part, really, guys, yeah. probably going to be this. Are there any cash buyers? Are there enough cash buyers? in this zip code. I think that's probably the first thing most of us are going to want to look at. Yeah. Alex, uh, Alex Williams in the group, he literally just asked that question about two minutes ago. So this is going to be right up his alley. There you go. So knowing how many cash buyers pulled up in that zip code when you search the address is going to be important. And last but certainly not least, again, this is just an extra perk. Yeah. Right below the map is a statistics tab. And if you click on that, it opens up. And this will actually use our data to tell you how this market has been reacting. So in the last 30 days, we've noticed the estimated values have increased by nearly a percent. In the last 30 days, we've noticed the rent values using our MLS data have increased by 2%. So I, if I'm the investor, I'm thinking, hey, man, I can fix and flip it, or I could probably rent this out because it looks like renting is becoming more of demand in this area right now. Yeah. And that's why prices are going up. So I can make these very great decisions or very important decisions without taking a guess. Yeah. Another thing I can think of that's very important is the days on market, knowing how fast a two bedroom will apply. But again, granted, this is across the board. So this is single family condominiums. So just be wary that this is an average of all two be bedroom type properties. Okay. Market trends, list price versus sell price and so forth. Yeah. So again, Homeowner calls you, you pull up the address. This is probably within the first five to 15 seconds, 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Now, if you feel like this homeowner is motivated, then you're going to go into the details. How do we when know if they're motivated? You know, I'm going to let you decide. I'm going to let you answer that question. But I would say <laughs> if they called you, they're yeah, motivated. They're motivated. That's, yeah. At, at that point, it's really up to you on how you're going to maneuver that conversation. I mean, just to get a phone call, yeah. there are investors out there that would die to have that because they're marketing to you know thousands, hundreds of leads and no one has called them back. So just to get that phone call, I, I'm a firm believer, the moment someone's called you, they're already a motivated seller. Why would they not? I mean, if they weren't, they would have never called you to begin with, right? Exactly. That's just my opinion. So that's a great question, tricky one, but that's my answer to that one. Okay. <laughs> so. We built this list, right? We had a few hundred properties. We marketed to them and this homeowner called us back. I searched the address. I get that local knowledge, but you know, she sounds, he sounds motivated. Then I'm gonna go into the details. And this is the most important part that's gonna help you with the conversation. Look guys, when someone calls you back, it doesn't go, hey, how's it going? Yeah, $30,000, how's that sound? That's not how the conversation goes, right? right? It's a, you're introducing yourself, you're getting to know the homeowner, asking questions. Build a rapport. Important. There you go. Yep. And you can do that with our data. So let me give you a before and after. Before technology, before having all the details in a click of a button, Right. you didn't know the bedrooms. You didn't know the bathrooms. You didn't know the year built. You had yeah. to ask that. Yeah. Right. And sometimes that might have threw the homeowner off. It might have been like, aren't you supposed to be the investor? Click. Right. Because that's what I would do if you called me. Yeah. I'd be like, aren't you supposed to know this stuff? You're the investor. H hang up. Why are you asking me this? Yeah. Right? You're the one that wants my house. You should do your research. Right. Th there are homeowners that are out there. I know it sounds rude, but that could happen. But today, I can search the property and immediately say, hey, Danielle, you know, before I talk to you about your house, I see that Gary is also on the property's title. Is Gary available? I'd like to have him on the line. And you see, having that information, I'm able to ask that because if I didn't know Gary was on the title as well, mm -hmm. me and Danielle, we could have made the decision on the phone. And then the next morning, Danielle could be like, hey, my husband said no. That happens. <laughs> that like does happen. Price. Exactly. So for me to immediately click on the property and know, hey, Danielle's not the only decision maker here. I can now say, Danielle, hey, I see that you're here. You're, you're a joint tenant on this property. Can I speak to Gary? Uh, can we have Gary on the line as well? Right. Now, when we have both parties on the line, 
instead of saying, well, okay, how many bedrooms and bathrooms do you guys have? I have that in front of me. And so now we can use questions, that information to get a better position on the property. So instead of saying, hey, what year is your, uh, the property was built? I can say, hey, my records indicate the property is nearly 30 years old. Right. When's the last time you guys did the roof or what major repairs need to be done to this almost 30 year old building? Mm -hmm. right? Now I know whether it's in a great condition, horrible condition, and that can determine whether I'm going to offer X amount or Y amount. Right. Okay. The list goes on. Yeah. You mentioned building rapport. Mm -hmm. Property characteristics can be used. Building size, land and location information. And one uh, example, I saw a friend of mine use the school district to build rapport. Hey, I see you guys are in Charlotte Mecklenburg School District. Your kids go to that school district? Oh. They do. What do they do at school? What sports do they play? Yeah. And that conversation went on for five minutes. Yeah. But you can tell he had his foot way in the door before, like compared to anybody else prior to that, uh, that call. Right? Yeah, the so, Hornets are really kicking ass this year, aren't they? You know, whatever the you know, school mascot is or whatever. Telling you, absolutely, man. Absolutely. Use it, use you know, it folks. I, the data's there. I, senior owners, when you see like tons of years of ownership, maybe 20, 30 years of ownership, mm -hmm. they might have gone to that school district. Yes. Ask about that, right? Yeah. Did they play sport? Did you meet your sweetheart at that school district? Uh huh. Right? These are some great questions that, again, can put you in a better position than the 30 other people that have called that homeowner prior, right? Yeah. Legal description, tax information, last transaction information. Again, these are the things we knew you needed the moment they called. So that way you're not um and uh and asking questions that are going to make you look less credible than the next investor who did their homework. Exactly. So we're not, no one's expecting you guys to search 100 properties and memorize all their data. That's why we're here. Right. We have that data. You search it. Danielle, I'd like to make sure, you know, Gary's on the line so I can make an offer on your 30 year old building or almost 30 year old building. How's the roof, by the way? Not good. OK, let me write that down. Oh, so I see you guys are in the Charlotte. Mac you guys have kids that go there. How's the school district? Great. Yeah. We mm -hmm. talk about that. Next, we talk about the cash sale. Oh, I saw you guys bought it in cash two years ago. Congratulations. Why are you calling me if you just bought it in cash? It was a bad investment. Well, I'm sorry to hear about that. Well, I see you guys own multiple properties. How's that working out for you guys? Right. I could talk about the taxes on this property. Mm -hmm. If there's a mortgage or transaction history, we can talk about. Now, there's no mortgage on this property. Right. Because they own it, it outright. They bought it cash. Yeah. Exactly. If there was, we would see that. Now we can ask about that lender. How's the credit union treating you? How's Bank of America treating you? Yeah. Oh, they're treating you horrible. Let's get you out of here quick. Right. So property details, financial information and that situational data, the cash, the other properties, the taxes. And finally, comparables, the ability to see what's sold near the neighborhood to educate the homeowner. Right. Yeah. Again, I, I look at comps not as to get a value, which I know that's what you're supposed to be doing. But I look at comps. I, I, again, I've worked with a lot of investors and I, I see comps as the ability to educate the homeowner You're because right. most of these homeowners, they're going to want full price. All right, you're calling them. They, they smell that. <laughs> My buddy Chris Jefferson calls it the commission breath. Yeah. Right? They smell that commission breath and they're going to ask for full <laughs> price. Right. Yeah. And so the way that I, I, I look at comping in my in my personal opinion is that you're going to be able to look at our comparables, you know, what's flipped in the area right? and, and the flips I like because it shows you, you know, what they're buying it for mm -hmm. and then what they're selling it for. So you can have an intellectual conversation, say, look, Mr. Homeowner, most of the flippers in this market are buying properties about ninety eight thousand dollars. They're not spending anything more than that because they have to flip it for about one forty. Right. There's a lot of work that needs to be involved. And so these guys are probably making a gross profit of 46 minus the rehab, minus the closing costs, minus all of that. And right. you see, I can have this conversation because of that data. But it's not only to do that. I, I personally think comparables right. is the most important one of the bunch because you can use filters. Mm -hmm. Hey, I want to find another two bedroom, one bathroom mobile home. You're built square footages. What type of record was it finance? Was it a cash transaction? And then property class. I need to run comps on a residential property and it needs to be either a manufacturer, mobile home or mobile home park. And then once you have that, 
you now have your results. You can see the characteristics Dope. and similarities. Yes. The price point. And that homeowner may know. He's like, hey, you well, new grass down the street just sold for 170. Oh, you're very right. I see that here. But new grass down the street, I don't have the photos yet. Um, I like to show them the photos. I know the photos are there. I just, yeah, I'm just, dude. You know. Yeah, I love them. So it looks like we haven't gotten them uploaded yet. Um, but there you go. So okay. the reason I like the photos is because now you can show the homeowner what that looks like. Hey, that $105,000 price point you keep pointing out, yeah. well, it needs to look like this right? in order for you to get 105. And again, during the conversation a few moments ago, they told us about the roof. They told us about the broken window in the back because someone broke in, right? They told us about the grass not you know, being green, it's brown. We now can see a comparison of one with a roof, one with grass, one without windows broken, and that one sold for 105. And so now we can tell the homeowner, look, your neighbor sold for 105. It's in great condition. I just can't give you 100. Yeah. And that's yeah. why I love comping is because it's not to argue with the homeowner. I, I see it time and time. I see people like, no, you're not going to ever get that price point. I, I think you're going to lose a lead that way. But I think if you take the stance of, look, I'd like to show you what's sold in your neighborhood and feel free to hit actions and generate our report, but to actually educate the homeowner say, hey, you know what? I agree. I think right. your house could sell for 170, but it needs to look like this. And to show them that report to me is the most important part. Here's where that house is that sold for 170. Here's the one that sold for 105. Here's one that sold for 130. But to also show them the pictures and the inside and outside mm -hmm. of these photos, yeah, like that to me is the most important part. So now when you say, look, that's why I'm offering you $70,000 cash because these are what you're asking for. You're asking for 140. You're asking for you know 100. You're asking. We can't do that. And yeah. so you're educating. You're not arguing. Right. And as a matter of fact, I would recommend you email this to the homeowner and let yeah. them sleep and look at it all night because then they're going to realize that's a lot of work I need to put in. Maybe that $70,000 offer is not so bad after all. Yeah. I, I wanted to kind of just say something real quick because a friend of mine sure. actually um, actually brought this up this morning and it was actually a really good idea. So Ernie, if you're watching this video, uh, understand that I'm not trying to steal your idea, but I think the world is ready <laughs> for it. Uh, he hit me up this morning and he sent me a text. He said, um, he, he, he gave me a term. He called it EPS, which is emotional pricing strategy, right? So a lot of the times when I've sold mobile homes and it'll be like, you know, a mid nineties or something like that. And people are just like, well, how do you price it? How do you price it? How do you price it? So I recently sold a mobile home for like 31.5 and I bought it for four and they were just like, well, how did you come up with the price? I'm like, number one, I know what people can afford where I live at. I know what mobile homes roughly go for. So somebody else would have gotten that mobile home and would have been like, matter of fact, the guy that I bought it from, he'd be like, man, it'd be a great deal at 20000 But the, the the home looked so good when I got finished with it, flipping it, I was like, no, I'm going to go for, I'm going to list this thing at about, you know, maybe 35 see what comes up. Uh, so, of course, when you listed at that, people are going to want to bargain down and everything. But when they got there and they saw it, that emotion told them, hey, this thing is worth that. Maybe I can negotiate that a little further, but I think that this is on the on the money. So the difference in between mobile homes versus houses, traditional uh, re traditional real estate is what I like to call it, is that's another idea that somebody recently stole from me. But uh, <laughs> so the thing is, is this. You can just say, well, I feel like it's worth this. And if it doesn't sell, then you can go on ahead and come down later. I have a very wealthy friend of mine. He has a bill, he has a billboard company. And he said, Michael, if you want the, uh, the Buick on the lot, then you aim for the Ferrari. So you can always change things up a little bit later. Um, if so I, I think that, that that actually goes into that. So with mobile homes, like you don't really have people going out to appraise things and so on and so forth. It's a bit more casual. 
of a market. You know, people are just wearing jeans and t-shirts. Nobody's showing up in suits, you know, with signs and, and stuff like that. It's very casual. Usually a lot of things get taken care of with, uh, you know, a cashier's check, a handshake and, you know, bill of sale. It, there's no deed and there's no attorneys and stuff to get involved in anything. And I, that's why I love this market because anybody can literally do it. You can just decide, hey, you know what? I'm sick and tired of eating Oreos and playing Call of Duty. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find myself, you know, um, a mobile home to go on ahead and stuff. And you don't have to have any real paperwork to go on ahead and get started. So I love that. Um, uh, uh, Kate Black said, she said, um, I personally think D4D, which is driving for dollars, is a better option for mobile homes. I wanted to ask you a question because I know that you have a driving for dollars application with your service. Did you yeah. want to kind of elaborate on that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I don't have it prepped. Um, give me a second. Go ahead and kill some time. I'll grab my phone and I'll actually project it to show you guys what like we can show you in our mobile app. And this is cool because it's no additional cost. It actually comes with your subscription to the web-based version. So okay. like, give me a split second. I'm to go run. It's right over here. One second. Okay. There you go. That's it. So guys, this is the mobile app. Um, you're going to go to our app store or the Google Play store and download the PropStream app. Now, here's the thing about our app. The toolbar is at the very bottom and there's really just five things. There's searching a property and then you could save that property, which it would go into your favorites. Okay. And your favorites is connected to the desktop version. So in the desktop version under my properties, Mm -hmm. We have a favorites area. It's under your mobile area. So like my 192 properties in my folder are the same 192 properties I've been saving on the mobile app. Okay. So toolbars at the bottom. First is search an address. Second is where we will store anything you're saving on the mobile app. The third is the driving for dollars feature, which we'll talk about in just a second. History shows you any property that you've ever searched, whether you've saved it or not, because just like me, I make a mistake and I sometimes go back and want to save something I didn't save. So history will show you what you've searched, whether you saved it or not. And then more is your settings. So what makes our app different compared to any other app out there is that we understood you're going to get out of the car eventually. Right. And so what makes our app really, really, really cool in my book is that this property in Newgrass that we pulled up and ran comps on, let's say the homeowner says, you know what? I don't want to talk anymore over the phone. You should come by this weekend. I want you to talk. I want to talk face to face. I want to get to know who you are, Burton. Right. Great. Now, normally I would print out all my paperwork, my notes. Let's say, forget it. Mm -hmm. Well, I have the PropStream mobile app. I can go into the search bar, type in the address. It's Newgrass Lane. It's going to pull it up. So there it is. When I click on the details, it's the same details that we were just looking at a few moments ago. So you have our data now on the go. You can talk with confidence, just like you did over the phone using our, our desktop version, but now you're doing it face to face. So you can talk about the property details, which it's in the same layout. See, ownership info, property characteristics, building information. Man, that is you sweet. get to see the <laughs> cash sell. So the situational data is there. So if it's in pre-foreclosure, you'll see the pre-foreclosure tab. If it has a lien, you'll see the lien tab and so forth. Yeah. Tax information, transaction history. Let's say the conversation's going really well. And he's like, I want 170, just like my neighbor down the street. I can pull up the comps and I can show him the $170,000 sale by clicking on it and saying, are you referring to this house right here that looks really awesome that sold for 170 because it's not compared uh, comparison to your house. I mean, the floor has been done. The kitchen has been done. The outside has been done. Mm -hmm. This is the one that sold for 170. And so you can use the comping on the go to educate on the go. That's why I, I like that's why I said it earlier. It's not about arguing. It's about letting them know what they can't get because he doesn't know that 170 was fully renovated. Yeah. And so now that we showed him what that 170 looks like, that homeowner is probably going to be like, well, it's, you know, I see there's one that sold for 139. I want 139. And now I can click on the 139 and say, well, that 139 looks like this. It's renovated. Yeah. And now we're 
lowering the price using data. So comping is on the go. Uh, in the event, the homeowner, let's say, is not there. Yeah. So let's say you're in your car, you're looking at the details, you decide to comp it just in case the, you know, you knock on the door, the homeowner's there. But let's say you knock on the door, the homeowner's not there. Well, you can look at the opportunity to see if there's any mortgage or if it's free and clear in this case. Then you can skip trace it on the go and send a postcard on the go. Right. And so this is where the driving for dollars t- tools come into play. But before we spend money on marketing to the property, I want to know if it's even worth my time first. Facts. And that to me is the most important part about our system is that when you're out there and you see an abandoned property, normally you want to just save that property and just send a postcard. But today you can search the property, you can run comps on it. You can even see if it has equity before you spend money on skip tracing or setting that postcard to the homeowner or pulling up any documents that are attached to the property. And in the event you forget how to get to this property, you can hit directions and get back to that property. Okay. So this is what separates our mobile app from everything out there is that we started with the data first because we knew that eventually you're going to have to visit a property or that, uh, you know, you might be driving for dollars and the homeowner's right there. The homeowner's there, talk to them, right? Yeah. Now, driving for dollars. What if you are going to just go out there and drive for dollars and save as you stay in the car? That's the drive feature. The okay. drive feature allows you to record your drive. And then you have two options. One is the traditional method, which is just drive. You tap on that. You mount your phone on your dash and start driving. And as you drive, that blue line will follow you. And the idea here, obviously I can't drive right now, is as you go to a market, you'll be able to zoom in, tap on a property, view the brief descriptions. You can hit the heart button and save it if you want, and then continue driving if you need to. Or if you have the time, instead of tapping and saving, you can just go into the details, analyze the property, and if you don't like it, then you can continue onward. I think at the, the very first, end. Yeah, I think oh. the first thing that they should do is once you go on ahead and mount your phone on your dash, is you should hit the subscribe button on my <laughs> channel. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> and then I you can go that. and make yourself some money. <laughs> Absolutely. First, and then yeah. so after you do that, um, you're going to hit end. So let's say your drive takes 30 minutes, an hour. You're going to hit the end at the very bottom. And for those that didn't record at the very beginning, we're going to ask you one last time. Would you like to save your drive and record it? And if you do, it's going to get sent into the more section under mobile activity drive log. Mm. So you can see the drives that you took in the last 24 hours, last 30 days, or all the drives that you've ever taken. And those greenhouses are properties that you saved along the way. So... So this it actually is the, kind of works like QuickBooks. Yeah, that's kind of what we and we wanted to make it as easy as possible. And for tax purposes, we wanted to make sure you knew the dates, the time, and the distance traveled. Dope. I love it. Finally, again, the power of our data. We realize that, again, there are properties out there that you're probably driving by that you're not catching physically like, because it, it, it's, it looks good physically. Yeah. Right. So there are problems out there that aren't so physical. So that's set filters and drive. So let's say I'm sitting at a coffee shop and I have nothing but time to kill. Yeah. I can sit there and say, you know what? I'm willing to drive five miles around my location for an owner occupied property that is currently in the lean category. And I want it to be a residential single family property with this or that or a mobile home with this or that. If you're wondering, why does this look familiar? Well, because these are the same filters on our search page of our desktop version. The only difference is that the desktop version searches a market. This searches a radius around your location. Uh Uh-oh, we were just talking about that. So you build this criteria around your location. And after you apply your criteria, maybe, you know, this is a tax lien with like 5,000 or more on it. Mm-hmm. And after you build your lists, you're going to hit apply and we're going to go find that based on your criteria. And right. we're going to show you, you can zoom out on the map 
where are those properties that are off market that have a tax lien of 5,000 or more? And you'll be able to see them right here on the, the leads result. And, and here's the thing, again, why I wanted to show you this, because let's look at number six really quick. Number six is great on the outside. Like if we were driving for dollars and we drove by this house, we we're like, yeah, that's perfect. That's Let's not add that to our list, right? Mm -hmm. But wrong, 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 wrong. The reason why I say wrong is because yeah, it looks great on the outside, but look at the details right over here. The lien details. This person has a federal tax lien and they owe the government $12,000. You might be great on the outside, but on the inside, meh, not so great. Life's a mess. These are houses we are driving by every day because they don't look physically bad. Yeah. Right? So again, this is just another cool feature to go and knock on that person with two mortgages, to go knock on that house that's 1970 in an HOA, to go knock on that you know two-story building with the senior owner in it. That's what you can do with our drive uh, set filters and drive feature. And so hey man, daddy these are likes, daddy likes. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so whoever brought up the question about the mobile app, thank you so much. Again, this is a complimentary tool. It mm -hmm. goes with your subscription. You're not paying any extra for it. And I believe it's a great tool because I, I know eventually you're going to talk to someone while you're out there on the field and that data will definitely help you out. It's also good because you know, you might be at a family party and you might hear a relative or a friend say, I'm having issues with my property. Whip out that phone. What's your address? And now you can start analyzing it right then and there. Right? You're yeah. going to run comps right then and there. You can educate them about their property and what it could sell for and what you can offer them and so forth. Yeah. So Basically a nice way of saying, okay, I know that property down the street sold for 170, but your place is a dump. Okay. <laughs> it smells like taco meat and chihuahua feces in here. And I've seen, I can tell you the horror stories, but in the interest of time, I will not. Folks, I can promise you this, on your journey with flipping these things, you are gonna see some shit. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. <laughs> oh, but anyways, I, I mean, it's, it's it's wonderful. And, and to, to, to have that data right there at your fingertips, uh, to be able to drive, to know where you're going, to be able to set your radius. Like I was just telling everybody when you kind of took your break, I was like, you know, set your radius to you know, a, a hundred mile radius or something. I think that's manageable for the average person, especially starting off. So go on ahead and try that out. I like it. That's correct. And that's really it, guys. I, again, I want to thank everybody for getting the time today. Um, we still have tons of features. You know, we didn't go over the, the marketing part. Uh, we have this feature called List Automator where you can build a list and set it and forget it, really. I mean, you can let us automate any marketing list where what it does is anytime uh, a new record gets updated in our system with your criteria, we just add it to your list automatically. Whoa. And anytime a property no longer meets your criteria, let's say you save a thousand properties and you want 35% in equity and all of them need to be off market. Mm -hmm. Let's say two weeks from now, three of them get listed by an agent and we catch that, Yeah, we'll remove them from your list so you don't have to call them or send them marketing and waste your money. Now, and is that, that now do we get that like at the, uh, the regular price or is that an additional cost? No, it, it is an additional cost. Thank you for bringing that up. So List Automator is an add-on, but learn more about it in our resources page or the help section or join one of our live webinars where we actually show you how to use it effectively. And again, to me, the most important part is you don't have to do a search ever again. You build a list today and then you automate it. And that way in 30 days, instead of doing that search again, we've already done it for you. So 30 days when you log back in, we just tell you to add these new properties to your list and remove the old ones from it. So that way you can have the most freshest list possible when you, when you log back in again. Okay, cool. And how much does, does that add on? It's an additional $27 on top of your subscription. But here, let me show you a reason why I, I personally nothing. like it is um, with the list automator. And this is again, an add on. It enhances the my properties page. So I can take a list like the Mackenberg tired landlord list we built earlier. Yeah. And say, hey, PropStream, this list that I built 
with my criteria, which is right over here, right? I wanted tired landlords, I wanted this, I wanted that. Well, this list, I'd like you to automate it. And that's this button right here. Dope. And this button, when new properties that match your exact criteria show up, we can add it to this list or add it to another list or we'll notify you and then you can do it yourself. Okay. But if you think that's cool, imagine this, this saves you time because I never have to do the search again. But if you think that's cool, get a load of this when properties change from your exact criteria. So these 250 properties that we saved with a specific criteria, if they change from that criteria, we can remove it from your list or put it into another list, like a follow-up list, mm -hmm. or we can notify you and you can do it yourself. Yeah. So you build this list, you set these rules up, you hit save. And what we'll do is we'll take your list and put it in the automated area. Mm -hmm. And the idea here is that when you log out and you go on that vacation that you deserve for 30 days, mm -hmm. when you come back, instead of going to the search page to rerun that search again, just like you normally would, yeah. right? 30 days from now or two weeks, you don't have to do that anymore, ladies and gentlemen. What you do when you log back in is you go straight into your My Properties and you click on a list that's being automated. And then here at the top, it says, hey, Burton, you need to add these three properties and you need to remove five of them because one of them's off market or on market now. Three of them have low equity. One of them has a lien. So now instead of going through 1700 results to find these five properties that are gonna waste my postcard money, mm -hmm. I can just click on those five, delete it. And now my list, which is 30 days old, is now fully refreshed by removing the ones that are outdated now. And so instead of marketing to 712 properties, I'm now marketing to 707 properties. And this is why I love it, because if you do it correctly, this happens. Hey, Burton, you're automating 6,000 records, 495 of them no longer need a postcard. And the average postcard is about 48 cents. So if you're telling me, Burton, remove 497 records that would have cost you 50 cents, yeah, you just saved $248.50 on marketing. Adds and up. we're not talking about phone calls. We're not talking about emails. We're not talking about knocking on doors. I mean, this is just postcards. Yeah. This is why I love List Automator because not only does it add the new records automatically for you or notify you, but it pays attention to what you've already saved and we will identify it if it's no longer in your criteria. And that to me, the, the red, that to me screams money being saved, money being saved. But that's my opinion. Yeah. I'm also the first to say, if you don't use it correctly, you're going to end up losing money instead of you know saving that potential money. So thank you for uh, letting me bring that up too, Mike. Well, that's what's up, man. I think that about covers it. And, you know, I'll say this right here, man. You know, if you've got like some other um, if you've got some other uh, things and everything that you want to come back and talk with us about that you didn't cover, you know, we'd love to have you back so that you can discuss those things. I think we're going to have a lot of fun playing around with your system, though. Very Thank intriguing you so stuff. You actually went very into depth with it. Thank you so much. And I'd be happy to come back, even if it's just a recap or if you guys have like a you guys want to do an ask me anything, Burton, you know, what I mean, like I, I'm here to make sure that you guys understand our system. Um, we can address any questions you have. The faster you understand this system, the faster you can go out there and help those homeowners that need your help. So I'm all for coming back when you need me, Mike, to to give more back to the audience if you need it. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And I just want to go on ahead and say this in closing, okay? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Folks, what do we say over here at Flippin' Mobile Homes to Mr. Burton Alicanda, who has come over here so graciously to show us his system? Okay, can we get some likes? Can we get some 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 ha ha's and guffaws and everything? Let's go on ahead and show this guy some some appreciation, okay? And, and for those of you guys who don't know, you will be seeing this in my next YouTube video. Trust me, we're gonna be going all out. But I want you guys to go on ahead and show some love to Bert, man. He has been an absolute treasure to have on today. Burton, I want to thank you a lot. Okay, thank you so much, bro. Let me take this off so people can take me seriously.
<laughs> thanks, for coming in. thanks for coming to share with us over here flipping mobile homes brother really appreciate that no no problem again thank you for blessing me by giving me the opportunity to share how to find this stuff i know when it comes to mobile homes it's a little bit tricky but we do have it and again if you guys have questions about your specific area and you know the mobile home stuff call let us know and we'll be happy to guide you to finding those types of leads in your market so again mike i can't thank you enough for giving me the time 